Lord Jesus, you uphold me that I might uplift you. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. There is a command or message that pervades the Christmas story and indeed the entire Bible. This command or message was given to various persons ranging from Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 1 to John in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 17. Today we hear this message from the angel to the shepherds. Fear not. It is said that the phrase, fear not, occurs 365 times in the Bible, one for each day. Whether this is accurate or not, what is important is that God does not want us to live in fear, which is a most powerful emotion. From the very beginning of creation, we are confronted with fear, as Adam and Eve hid from God in the garden because of fear. Today, in our lifetime in the 21st century, people are still caught in the grip of their fears. And this is perhaps more so during the Christmas season. Christmas should be a time that is joyous, happy, and most of all, Christ-centered. Yet the season is full of fear, Fear of not having enough money to purchase a gift for your loved one or your child. Fear of not meeting everyone's expectations. Fear of being alone. The psychologist Mary Miller affirms the prominence of fear and opines that society is drawn on fear. She referred to the advertisements one sees on television. Notice how many are aimed at tapping into people's fears. She continues, even political campaigns tap into human fear. For those of us who are old enough to remember the fear of communism being what motivated a certain political campaign, or the fear of immigrants in the United States that motivated Donald Trump. Fear is a present feature of the Jamaican society because of the brutal scourge of crime and violence which has overtaken us. A few days ago, two women called hotline. One to explain her experience of being abducted by some men in a taxi, being robbed, and being threatened that if she took the license plate of the car, they would come and kill her. The second call spoke to the fear that this lady had from that experience that she had children. She was afraid of what could happen to them. Women are afraid of taking taxis these days because you're just not sure what will happen at the end of the day. Living with fear and its cousin worry can place us in a vortex of disasters that we cannot control. At Christmas, we worry over meals, over who will be present and who will be absent from the dining table because of death. Simple as this may sound, 
family gatherings at Christmas can be most stressful. And we know how stressful Christmas has been since COVID-19. On occasions when it seems as if we have nothing to worry about, we worry about the fact that we have nothing to worry about. The command, fear not, in Luke's gospel was said by an angel on three occasions in anticipation of the birth of Christ. To Zachariah, to Mary, and finally to the shepherds as we heard in this morning's reading. So these characters receive the command, fear not. What was Zachariah's fear? He was afraid that he and Elizabeth would be childless. And if he should die before Elizabeth, he worried about her protection and care in a patriarchal society in which widows were marginalized. Elizabeth must have been afraid every time she walked the streets of being mocked like Sarah, Abram's wife, of being childless in a society that valued children, especially boys. Luke records that when the angel visited him, he was terrified. But the angel said, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been answered. The good news is that Elizabeth, who was called barren, will give birth to a child in answer to Zachariah's prayer. Their lives would be changed, and Zachariah's fear would ultimately be turned into joy as he sang at his son's birth. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn for the salvation of all. Zachariah and Elizabeth were afraid of childlessness and the insecurity as a consequence. You know, this is a real fear for some people. As they contemplate a future without what many Jamaicans describe as insurance, because some see children as insurance. Although in these days, so many children abandon their parents. So Mary was afraid of having a child without being married. As the Bible says, without knowing a man. Mary perhaps had the greatest fear of humankind, that of the unknown. When our lives do not go as we have planned it, it is easy to fear that which is unknown. You see, this is not how Mary had planned her life. She would marry Joseph to whom she was engaged and live happily ever after. But God had different plans for her. She would become pregnant according to the angel. She was scared, not only due to the angel's presence, but because of the shame and scandal that she would experience. Certainly, Joseph would disown her, and she could be stoned to death. Still in fear, she asked the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel allayed her fears and told her that, this will be accomplished through the Holy Spirit, for nothing is impossible with God. For nothing is impossible with God. Mary's fear was turned into faith and commitment as she declared, be it to me according to your word. 
This demonstrated her absolute submission to God's will and purpose. This must have been difficult. But her reputation, her body, her soul and future were at God's disposal. Can you hear God's fear not as you face the unknown? Can you hear God's fear not as you contemplate your future? Mary's response encouraged us and in a sense models for us how to respond to God's call on our lives. Do not fear, only believe and trust God. Do not fear, only believe and trust God. Believe that God has chosen you for a particular task and God will help and equip you this Christmas to bring good news to others as he did with the shepherds. How can you demonstrate the heart of Mary this Christmas and so overcome your fears? How can you demonstrate the heart of Mary this Christmas and so overcome your fears? No doubt, as the shepherds watched their flocks, they may have had fears. Fears of bandits or animals attacking them and stealing their flocks, and even of bandits killing them. Certainly, in our times, we have heard of men abducting goat farmers and killing them. We too are fears of being victims of crime and violence. We are afraid that persons may invade the privacy of our homes and take our lives, as many have experienced. The data on the amount of persons murdered, abducted, and subjected to physical and verbal abuse is not encouraging. The numbers increase every single day. <coughs> and some of us are afraid of leaving our homes. The shepherd's fear is turned into joy as they hear the good news that the long-expected Savior is born. Finally, what the prophets foretold had now been fulfilled. Israel needed a Savior, one who would deliver them from the oppressive rules, rulers of the day, and from the harsh socio-economic conditions of the day. And this is familiar to all of us. We are afraid of the economic turndown. <coughs> we are afraid that our pension will not enable us to live a 
reasonable lifestyle. We are afraid that the investment we made on the stock market might crash. What is your fear this morning? Can you identify with the shepherds? I hope we can. Because the shepherds run with haste to see for themselves God in flesh, Jesus Christ, the promised deliverer in a lonely manger. A Savior has come to rescue all people from fear, from political oppression, from sin, and from death. The shepherds open their hearts to the birth of Jesus. The total opening of the heart creates confidence in God, and it is the appropriate tool to remove fear. Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17 reminds us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Let us claim that power today. That power manifested in a frail, helpless, powerless child who was and is the Son of God. So my sisters and brothers, I would like to share four reasons why we do not have to live in fear. God has sent a Savior, one who is our hope, our peace, our joy, our love, and one who loves us so deeply, so passionately. So firstly, God wants us to live with hope and assurance that all his promises will come true for us as they came true for Israel, and that our future is firmly and safely secure in God's hand for our good. You see, God will never leave us or forsake us. God journeys with us because God became incarnate and put on our flesh to identify with us, to journey with us through life. He has given us hope. Christmas is a renewal of hope, even in the midst of fear. Christmas is a renewal of hope, even in the midst of fear. We have lasting hope through the salvation we have in Christ. Hope means that even when it looks like it's all over, it's not all over yet. That's why the Bible says we can rejoice even in our tribulations. God is working in our hard times to produce proven character and hope in us. <coughs> Secondly, Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and through him we find our peace. The angels sang, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth among those whom he favors. This peace is not a cessation of war by violence, but a sense of well-being with God and man. The hymn writer reminds us, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. In this relationship between man and God, there is peace and there is concord. Thirdly, like the shepherds, our fears can turn into joy, not mere happiness, for the Savior has come. 
joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let us our songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sound in joy, repeat the sound in joy, repeat the sound in joy. Once we allow Christ to be born in our lives, we will experience joy, similar to what Mary experienced at the birth of her son, the Savior of the world. Fourthly, we are reminded that perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love cast out fear. First John chapter 4 and verse 18. And who can forget? Because everyone knows it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Why should we fear when God sent his son to reconcile us to him. And we celebrate that this morning. Love came down at Christmas and demonstrates how we should live. This love manifested at Christmas brings transformation in the lives of men and women. I was at a business place yesterday. And a woman <coughs> with a phone in her hand remarked, You know, them killed two Chinamen in Southfield. If you know Southfield, it's a quiet, remote place. Right? The business bust in there. And she said, not even Christmas changed them heart? Not even Christmas changed them heart? God who loves us sent his son so that our hearts could be changed we could be transformed so that the children of men could become the children of God <coughs> but we love darkness more than light but I won't say more about that today or tomorrow Love came down and demonstrates how we should love. One of my favorite carols says it this way. <coughs> and you know that if I could sing, I would sing it for you, right? But I won't take that chance because I don't have my best voice this morning. So instead, I'll read it for you. Truly, he taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. What beautiful words. And when they are sung, even more beautiful. Can we begin? We love one another as God in Christ has loved us. <coughs> the birth of Jesus came into the midst of a host of impossible conditions. A people suffering under the occupation of a conquering army. 
a corrupt and collaborating priesthood. A religious system intent on preserving the status quo. A woman who could not have children. A virgin teenager. These hardened people found it difficult to believe that anything could change and perhaps on some level feared change. And yet, as the prophet Isaiah had said 700 years earlier, God is a God of new things, of new possibilities, of things we have forgotten how to dream about. Not only was Jesus' birth an embodiment of that newness, his life constantly called us to new possibilities, to new visions of what can be, to ways of living that challenge the dead end wells of impossibility. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto us is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And the church says, Amen. <laughs>